After having grown up as a Protestant, I could never have imagined that I could have this intimate relationship with Mary, our mother, like I do with Jesus, our Savior. But my husband and I were operating a Christian retreat, and at that time, we would have anybody could come up and spend time with us in the Word of God, in prayer. It didn't matter if you were Protestants or if you were Catholics. So we had people coming up and sharing about their faith, including our Catholic friends. And eventually, we were drawn into the Catholic Church through a series of amazing events. And when it came to our Blessed Mother Mary, I thought, oh, I'd just really like to know about her. So I asked her, I said, Mary, if you're real, please show yourself to me. And at the time, we were doing a ministry of music at a place called, I think at the time it was called Bridges, where they minister to the people on the streets. People can come in and get free meals. And while we were singing, this man came up with this lady and he was holding this beautiful silk red rose and they were heading right towards me and he was full of love and smiling and he said that this rose was for me and it said something like all my love with it and for me at the time and what I was learning about our Blessed Mother to me that was a sign that she was real that she was revealing herself to me there was another time where I was before the Blessed Sacrament and I was praying and asking for a statue of Mary one where she smiles. And again, over a series of events, we received a beautiful marble statue with her smiling. So again, that was like another answer to prayer of her revealing herself to me. Over time, we had dear friends of ours who had given us a little booklet, which was 33 days of consecration of, of preparation, total preparation uh, of consecration, 33 days with St. Louis Marie de Montfort. And I took this little booklet with me. And at the time, we had went on a trip and we were in Florida. And I was feeling led to maybe start this consecration. So I did it while we were there. And when we came back home, at the same time, we had our daughter living with us. And she was going through a really rough time in her life. Depression, on medication. So I had just finished my consecration on March 25th, 2011. And we learned from doing our consecration that Mary, our mother, she will look after our family and our friends and our loved ones better than we ever could. And I started to see this come into realization with our daughter. As we learn about Mother Mary being our spiritual mother in the order of grace, it was like she was revealing to me what I was supposed to be doing. I was learning that having living masses said for our loved ones was so important. As Catholics, the most important prayer for us is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So I started having Masses said for our daughter. I had another girlfriend who had a daughter going through a really rough time, so she joined me in that. Then we learned about you can do consecrations for your children. So my girlfriend and I, we did it for our daughters and consecrated them on the same day, which happened to be the Feast of the Queenship of Mary on August 22nd. We watched before our eyes as our daughter started to have questions, as she started to change, and eventually she turned her life over to the Lord. She received conversion. Then I was learning about the green scapular devotion and how Mother Mary promises conversion and peace and healing. So I stuck it under her mattress without her even knowing about it. And we need to pray a prayer every day. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us now and at the hour of our death, amen. And I would pray this for our daughter every day. And she also, we started to notice that she started to receive, she received a healing, she went off her medication, her conversion, she decided to become Catholic, came into the Catholic Church, eventually she went back to work, and eventually she met her future husband at Notre Dame Cathedral, a cathedral named after a lady. And then he ended up proposing to her there, and then they ended up getting married there. Absolutely amazing what has happened, how we have seen how Mother Mary has worked in the lives of our daughter. And eventually, too, she ended up knocking on the door one time as a surprise. And at that time, we had this full-size statue of Mother Mary in our home. And she was trying to get pregnant for over a year. So I told her, come on over here. And I touched the womb of Mary, and I touched her womb. And we prayed. And five weeks later, she's calling me saying, Mom, what do you want to be called? I'm five weeks pregnant. And then our grandson gets born on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. And that's who we find out later on that Our Lady of the Cape is fashioned after. So that's what happened with our daughter. Remember, oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection. Or 
sought thy intercession was left unaided was left unaided and then a year later after i had did my consecration my husband decided to do his he did the same thing with St. Louis Marie de Montfort. And then I started to see how Mother Mary started working on my husband. Amazing. He wanted to start praying the rosary. He wasn't praying the rosary and he wasn't praying it with me. And all of a sudden he started to get a desire of looking into it and reading about it and wanting to pray the rosary. But he couldn't find one that he liked to pray with on YouTube. So then he started using his gifts and talents and he actually ends up producing a rosary DVD that we can then watch together and pray together. He starts to get this green thumb and wants to make our backyard into a garden. He makes a beautiful flower garden and brings in the statue of Mother Mary. Amazing things. He starts to want to, to wear the brown scapular and finds out about that devotion. And then eventually he ends up writing and producing a Marian Consecration for Little Souls book. Amazing. And then we get to myself and my personal relationship with Mary and how she worked on my life. Absolutely incredible. There was a time in my life where I was going through this period of intense fear in my life. And we had other situations happening with family members around us. Some needed healings. The house we were living in, we needed to sell it. So we prayed also for even Christians that they would come and buy it. But something that I'd never experienced before, I had a girlfriend come up to me and she said, I think Mary wants to come and visit you. And I, had, I was like, with a traveling pilgrimage statue. I'd never had this happen before as, as being a new Catholic. So I said, sure, okay, great. So I meet her at this church and she hands me a statue just like this one, an 18 inch of Our Lady of the Cape. I didn't know it was her at the time. And I said to her, how do I look after her? What do I do? And she said, well, she likes to be with her children. So why don't you just get some medals and put little medals by her? I had a blessed candle. So I brought her home. I did these things. I started spending time with her. And she said, be on the alert for graces that may happen. Oh my, did the graces ever happen? The house got sold within a couple of weeks to a Christian author. The family members started receiving healings. And I just started feeling like I was supposed to start bringing her places and taking her to pray with people while she was spending time with us. Eventually she had to be returned. So we were so excited, my husband and I, with everything that she was doing in our lives that we decided to get our own statue. So we went on a Thanksgiving pilgrimage to Our Lady of the Cape Shrine in Quebec. And we ended up getting our own statue and we touched it to the other statue that eventually had to leave us. So with our new statue, I started feeling led to also bring her places. And one of the places I brought her to was also here at the house we, were, we live in after we had moved. And we started to have butterfly situations happen too. We had an anonymous letter with a blue butterfly on it. And eventually I looked into butterflies and Mother Mary on Google and found out information there. We live in a house here where people actually, we rent out rooms. And she went through this house when we had the traveling pilgrimage statue, I brought her here. And we witnessed people started moving out and Catholics started moving in. And it was so amazing how one time we had us all together for dinner and everybody was sharing their stories about how they felt led to, to come here and live here. How they felt led to come and live here, what we now call the House of Hope.
So at our parish, our local parish, Blessed Sacrament, they would have a healing ministry night once a month. So I started to bring Mother Mary, and I would start praying with people with Mother Mary, and I started to collect holy oils and medals of saints and prayer cards, and I just loved to pray with people, even way back when we had our retreat center that we were running. So we set up a little area in front of the statue of Blessed Sacrament, and the statue at the time that was there was Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament. And I brought Our Lady the Cape and I would sit there and people would come and we would pray together and they would hold Mother Mary. They would give their prayers to her. They just loved on her. And eventually, I just continued to do this month after month. Then there was started up a rosary prayer group. So we would bring Mother Mary again to the same parish, Blessed Sacrament, and we would be there and we'd be praying the rosary and having her present. Well, we were also praying at the time wanting to evangelize Canada somehow. We were also praying for our first-class relic to come into our prayer ministry. As a Catholic, I was learning more and more about relics and the importance of them and how amazing it is if you can get a first-class relic. So we started praying for a first-class relic. And one day, I ended up at a local church here in town that has a free bookshelf. People can bring their spiritual items, books and things that they want to give away. And I ended up there one day and I saw on this bookshelf this little collection of old, old medals and a little folder. And in, I opened up this little folder and inside this little folder was a little relic of Blessed Mother Marie Leone, who I didn't know who she was at the time. I saw her name on this little relic, a second class relic. And I came home and I was all excited for finding all these things and I was so excited to tell my husband. So I got Google, I started to find out who she was. It turns out that she has founded an order and that helps priests, the Sisters of the Holy Family. I decided to call the order and I spoke with a nun there. And she spoke English, which was great because it was in Quebec, but it turned out that it was only about three hours away. So I called her up and I explained to her and I said, we have this ministry, this prayer ministry. We're praying for a first class relic. I found this little relic of Blessed Mother Marie Leone. Where is she at in her canonization process? And she said, oh, she's blessed. I said, do you think maybe we could have a first class relic for our ministry? She said, sure. So my husband and I make the plans. We're going to go again on another Thanksgiving pilgrimage to Our Lady of the Cape at the time, along with the book that he had written to give to her so that she, we can ask her to bless it. And as we go there and we stop there and we pick up, they give all these things to us. And what do they give us? This first class relic of Blessed Mother Marie Leone. Pray for us in a Canadian maple leaf. How amazing is that? Well, we were praying about wanting to evangelize Canada. So that was absolutely amazing. So as we were traveling along now, we had this first class relic. We arrived at Our Lady of the Cape Shrine. And I was all excited to share with people. We end up in this gift shop and I, we were speaking with people and there was this man standing there asking about, do you know about Blessed Mother Marie Leone? He said, I sure do. He ended up being a priest, an oblate priest who lived there and he pulled out this medal from around his neck. He had received a healing through her intercession. So then we were also speaking with him at the time about whether or not he would know where the statue was from the 1947 Congress here in Ontario, Canada, back in 1947. So he said, well, come with me. And he took us into archives. And in the archive there is where we discovered an ark and two angels and a, a life-size statue of Our Lady of the Cape. And eventually we came across finding out that the one that was here in 1947 was actually on the third floor. Well, this was all exciting news for us. 
but it also meant that we wanted to start promoting Our Lady of the Cape. My husband really wanted to start promoting this 1947 Marian Congress. That meant that we were able to open up a little shop in our parish to be able to promote Our Lady of the Cape. And that's exactly what we did. And we wanted to get all kinds of sizes of statues in there because of how she had re revealed and done so many things for us and graces for us that we just wanted to have all these little different statues. Eventually got this little one here, which is great to hold and would even take her to restaurants at times. But this was an amazing thing for us now that we could open up this shop down there, start telling the story of Our Lady the Cape, finding out that she was Queen of Canada, Queen of the Holy Rosary. So for me, as a personal relationship with Mother Mary, she has poured out upon a graces upon graces. There are so many stories that I could share. Lovely lady dressed in blue, Teach me how to pray God was once your little boy Tell me what to say Did you lift him up sometimes Gently on your knee Did you sing to him the way That my mother does to me Understand me now, you know, lovely lady. Tell me, for you know. We learned also after doing Saint Louis Marie de Montfort to continue to cultivate our relationship and renew our consecrations every year. So eventually, we found out about 33 days to morning glory with Father Michael Gately, and then there we also find this phrase, which says. The Holy Spirit always makes use of Mary to give birth to Christ. The more he finds a soul that is united to Mary, the more active and mighty he becomes in producing Jesus Christ in that soul and that soul in Jesus Christ. So we can fall in love with Mary and love her as much as we like. St. Maximilian Kolbe talks about you can never love the Blessed Virgin Mary too much because you can never love her more than Jesus did. So we continue to re-consecrate ourselves every year. We have daily consecration prayers that we use, and she's continuing to pour out graces upon us. We saw what she did with my daughter, with my husband, another story of my father passing away and how she took me by the hand through all of that. Absolutely incredible. So with all of this personal testimony, even having with us today also St. Faustina, this is my patron saint. This is who I chose when I became Catholic, because she's also instrumental to us coming into the church. St. Faustina, pray for us. She just happens to be visiting our parish right now. At the same time that I get to do this interview, this story about Mary, my mother. I love our Catholic faith. I love the fact of that we can have the angels and the saints and this incredible devotion to Mary, our mother. I can encourage everybody, don't delay, consecrate today. What does the Blessed Mother want to do to you and your family?
Lovely lady, tell me what to say. Lovely lady, teach me how to pray. Lovely lady. I came across this incredible prayer with the Holy Spirit from St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi. So let's pray it together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come, as you descended upon Mary, that the Word might become flesh. Work in us through grace, as you worked in her through nature and grace. Come, consume in us whatever prevents us from being consumed in you. Saint Faustina, pray for us. Blessed Mother Marie Leone, pray for us. And Blessed Father Frederick, pray for us. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In my relationship with Mother Mary, I also had came across this book called The Woman in Orbit. It ended up being a feast day every day with Mary. And these are stories from hundreds of years of how she has revealed herself to us, her children through images of hers, through statues. I even learned one time about St. Gerard, how a statue of our Lord Jesus and Mother Mary, they came alive and he would play with the child Jesus and they would give him a piece of bread to take home with them. So I was learning about how nothing's impossible with God. So even these stories about how she reveals herself to us personally as our children. So I just try to love on her as much as I can. I believe that even though she's in the form of a statue, She's still receiving this love from me. I talk to her, I pray to her, I ask her questions, I try to listen to her, I journal. I just love her and the more and more I find myself loving on her, the more graces she pours out upon myself, my family, people around me. It could, I could write a book about all the things that have happened. I had learned about the first Saturday devotions where we learn where Lucia, the Blessed Mother Mary and Jesus had revealed themselves to her and they had shared about how Jesus had said that he wants devotion to her immaculate heart. One of the things we do in a first Saturday devotion is we spend 15 minutes alone with Mother Mary and she said that she would be there with us during that 15 minutes. I love to try and have childlike faith, that's what I so desire. So I took that seriously, this 15 minutes alone with Mother Mary. So I have a journal book those 15 minutes on the first Saturdays, because I don't just do it five Saturdays, I try to do it every first Saturday, the first Saturday devotion. And I take that time with her, with my journal book, and I set it aside, and I spend time with her, and I just, I speak with her, I write down what I believe, I hear that she's saying to me, what mystery we're gonna to ponder together, and she tells me things through that mystery about my own life, and I'll write it down, I'll journal it. And it's a very special time, an intimate time for us, I take that to heart when it says 15 minutes with Mother Mary and she tells us she, she will be there with us. It's amazing. Daily, daily sing to Mary, sing my soul her praises to. Oh Mother Mary, how I love you. I am all thine and all I have is thine. Oh dear Jesus, through Mary, your most holy mother. My name is Michael O'Neill and I'm the Miracle Hunter. Today we're talking about the miraculous icons of Mary from around the world. One of the most famous icons is that of Our Lady of Good Counsel uh, from Genizzano, Italy in the year 1467. And the story goes like this. On the Feast of St. Mark, April 25th, the townspeople of Genizzano were walking around celebrating that feast when they heard beautiful music in the air. And they looked up and they saw a white cloud descending. And when it descended, an image of Our Lady and a mother and child appeared in front of them and they lifted it up and they took it into their church. And there it rests, as thin as an eggshell along the wall there. And they often pass a string along that image to show that it miraculously rests there against the wall. And in the year 1682, it was formally named as Our Lady of Good Counsel. And Pope Leo XIII later added that title, Our Lady of Good Counsel, to the Litany of Laredo, making it one of the most recognized titles of Mary around the world. And that was Our Lady of Good Counsel from Genizzano, Italy in the year 1467.
have uh, really with pleasure through the intercession of our mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and may God uh, bless us and keep us constantly under his blessing. He who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Shalom world, God's own channel.